stopped eating. Spot cut his paw. Can cats catch a cold? I didn't know that. Hey, hey Dr. Dr. Mike. Mike. <laughs> Dr. Mike Hutchinson is here for his Ask Dr. Mike segment this morning. He spoke last week actually with KDK's Amy Wattis about a pet problem you may have thought was isolated to just summer. Turns out ticks can still be a problem in the winter. The snow actually insulates them in the ground, even in sub-zero temperatures. Take a look. Hey, give her our pets. Show them how you give her our pets. Gina Benka makes sure her Australian Shepherd Roxy is living her best life. And part of that is keeping her clear of ticks. We do Simparica, which is a pill every month, which is really easy. A flea and tick preventative a lot of vets recommend. Unfortunately, Western Pennsylvania is now number one in Lyme disease and rabies, unfortunately. Just because it's winter, that doesn't mean our furry friends are protected from the bad guy. And we get one day above 32 degrees, they come up and they're hungry. So they latch on to get a blood meal. If we were in a tundra and we didn't get that snow, we would kill tons of ticks during the winter with this cold weather. Something that's deceiving to a lot of pet owners. I had no idea. I thought once the cold came in, I thought that it would just go away. <laughs> Why taking those preventative steps is all you really can do. If you do both, you're doing the best blanket protection for preventing Lyme disease in our dogs. But keep in mind... It's not 100%, nothing is. All my dogs are on Advantix too, so I really don't have any issues um, with them, but I check them all the time when they come in. I do feel that people should be aware because you're still sending your dog outside and the dog is coming back into your house. They could jump onto me or uh, young kids. Amy Waters, KDK TV News. So Dr. Mike joins us now. We'll talk a little bit more about this problem. You know, you really just don't think about ticks being an issue now. And I know that Amy personally experienced this problem. Yeah, and, and I took a tick off my own dog a couple weeks ago. And you wonder, is it, you know, it was 20 below outside. You wonder, was that a tick that was in the house? But on these days that we get above 30 degrees in the winter, 32 degrees, those ticks are hungry, those adult ticks. They're coming up through the snow looking for a blood meal. Wow. And that's why we find ticks year round in this area. So we're, we're gonna have some more good weather coming up, I hear this weekend, so ticks will be out again. So you right. wanna keep that tick protection year round. And the blanket protection I was talking about right, in that right. segment was the Lyme vaccine and the year round tick control is the best blanket protection you can offer your dog. And that's what I was talking about in that segment. And so, I mean, in that, are you still, um, I mean, are, are there still a chance for them to get it, yeah, even not, with the vaccine and a, the... It's exactly right. Okay. None of them are 100%. And, right. and I just diagnosed one on Saturday with clinical Lyme disease, wow. and that dog was vaccinated properly, and, he, and the owner said stated he was still giving the tick prevention year-round. So um, it can happen, but you give yourself the best opportunity to prevent it. So I know in Amy's case, she has a husky, so very thick fur. What do you do if you don't find the tick? Um, but you start, like, what symptoms are you looking out for? How do you know? So the classic, like this dog came in just non-weight bearing limp and there was no fractures. We couldn't palpate any pain except in the joints, maybe a bit of a fever. And so lameness, fever, dog's not doing right. And, okay. uh, and that would be a classic sign of clinical Lyme disease in a pet. And do you do a blood test to? Yep. Okay. We, uh, luckily we can do that in 10 minutes in the office and we had that diagnosis and I will bet I'll find out this morning that that dog's already doing better. Oh good. You put them on antibiotics. I was going to say, so what's the treatment? Yeah, just an antibiotic for about a month in dogs. In people, you never clear the Lyme disease completely. And people, it's a lot more of a problem. In dogs, luckily, it usually doesn't come back. In most cases, it does not come back. Okay, well, definitely some good stuff to know. And I know we were just talking about this. You get roughly 30 questions a day from people. With Easily, on email, and, uh, and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, you know, clients obviously would get first choice because they're clients and I know their pets well, mm -hmm. but I also make sure I answer questions from other people um, just to try to help out. Unbelievable, you're certainly a busy man. Okay, so we have this question. This is uh, coming from Cindy and Rose in Oakland. She says, our cat has runny eyes off and on during most of the year. Does that sound like allergies to you? Well, I mean, here around it could be an allergy, but they can also get these chronic upper respiratory infections that are caused by viruses, and it will cause runny eyes off and on. We try to get them on a good diet, keep their vaccines current, and then maybe there's a product called lysine. It's just an amino acid. You can get it over the counter, and we can add that to their diet as well, and it helps inhibit the proliferation of the viruses. And, and it could be allergies, and see your vet for that distinction. It's a little bit hard to tell on the 
TV what that is, but um, most of the time it's the upper respiratory infection. Okay, I thought this was a really interesting question. Um, do you agree that it is a good idea to feed raw foods to animals with cancer? And then there was kind of a back and forth between what some friends had suggested doing. Yeah, so we have to be careful because their immune system, when they have cancer, their immune system is compromised and raw food can carry with it bacteria like salmonella and E. coli. So we want to be careful about that. There are some things we can do to prevent those, maybe cook it a little bit or maybe spray on some bacteriophages that will kill them. Um, there's a diet out there called the keto diet, K-E-T-O. Okay. I actually like that diet because cancer likes sugar. They're what we call facultative anaerobes, which means they live on sugar. So if we put them on a, a more of a protein diet, they don't have a lot of sugar available and it does eliminate some of the cancer. So hmm. diet can be very helpful. Okay, so let's talk about something we don't really talk about that often, horses. Do horses need shelter from this cold weather? I drive by a property on my way to work and this poor whole horse is out in the cold. Yeah, those, those horses are typically out year round. They're going outside. But what the owners do this time of year is they keep blankets on them, they feed them more, they have plenty of hay available all the time, and they provide fresh water, not ice, you know, because they have the heated tanks. You have to have fresh water available and you have to watch out for hoof care this time of year because of the ice and the snow and the moisture you don't want them getting infections inside their feet so good care and if you put a blanket on them you have to check under the blanket because they can sweat and you can have warmer days and cooler days and they're more active and less active and we want to make sure that they're not getting bacterial infections under that um, coat so we have to keep checking it preferably a waterproof coat that breathes so do, if you see something like that, or should you report it? I mean, what do you do if you think that there's like some neglect going on with horses or dogs? I know we've talked about the new laws with uh, dogs being out in the cold too. I used to go and evaluate these animals on farms, and I can tell mm -hmm. you 90% of the time, those animals were being well cared for. Okay. 10% of the time they weren't, and I think most people knew. They, I think they knew the difference. Right. When you look at them, you know. When you see these dogs on a chain that don't have much meat on them, and they're shivering, those animals need help. They shouldn't right. be out in this weather. And uh, the same would hold true for horses. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go here. Against your advice, <laughs> uh -oh. we got a new puppy for Christmas. How do we socialize it in this terrible weather? You know, my mother, my mother just got two new puppies in this weather. You know, I, w I would be okay with a puppy for Christmas. But, <laughs> I, you know, with children, I always say that's not the best gift because the children are preoccupied with their gifts. And you need to start immediately the minute you get them to start training and, right. and socialize. And so my advice now, this weather, it might be hard to socialize. So you go out shopping. Take them to the shopping store. You can take them with you. Yeah. Experience, you know, people the best and most formative times for their social behavior is that first four months of life. So get them out there, take them to the pet store, let them experience different people, different noises, different colors, different um, cats smells, if you right. want to, you know, just, and, uh, and other animals, and it would be the best thing you could do. Then you can try play dates. Maybe your neighbors have some pets that you okay. could, you know, introduce and bring them over, and, uh, and maybe an agility class or something like that. Just to get them out. All yeah. right, Dr. Mike, thanks for being here. Uh, Dr. Mike Hutchinson of Animal General in Cranberry and regular contributor on the Ask Dr. Mike segment here on PTL. We always love having him here. We'll be